With us today are two awesome guys. They wrote this book, um, The Map, Your Path to Effectiveness in Leadership, Life, and Legacy. It was sent to me by someone who's read my books and said, I really, really loved their book and you should read it. I did. Uh, and, and he was right to send it to me. The names are Keith Eigel and Carl Kuhnert. Uh, Keith is the um, head of, he has uh, heads up the Leader Lyceum, which is a leadership training program. And it's an organization dedicated to facilitating the growth of executive and next gen leaders. And we have Carl Kuhnert. They wrote the book together. He's an industrial and organizational psychologist out of Emory. And uh, we're going to talk about their book. So Keith and Carl, welcome to the Bregman Leadership Podcast. Great to be with you, Peter. Thanks, Peter. So the book is The Map. It's a map of your life. Give us a quick, you know, quick overview. And there's five levels. And we're going to talk about each of these overviews. But, but you know, give us just a sentence or two on this whole idea of a 30,000 foot view. Okay, so um, basically over the course of our lives, we have various lenses that characterize how we understand ourselves and others and the circumstances we find ourselves in. And uh, many of your listeners may be uh, familiar with a guy named Jean Piaget, a famous child psychologist that really looked at how children don't just keep learning stuff. They start seeing it or understanding it in fundamentally different ways. Well, that development, that growth continues into adulthood. And when we turn 21 and get our adult card or whatever the right age is, we don't stop growing. We're not just grownups. And so the book is about how as grownups do we keep growing and how does this make a difference and relate to leadership? That's great. And, and the, the levels aren't necessarily correlated with ages, right? I mean, you could, you could reach maturity at a, a, a variety of different ages, but there are still level steps that you go through. Correct. Um, however, the, the fact is that they actually, these levels are correlated with age. Because one of the ways in which we develop into adulthood is through experience. Right. Right. And so what happens is we, as we learn from experience, we actually mature and grow uh, and actually can and actually over time um, increase our, our kind of levels of understanding. So the key is, I guess it's not it is correlated with age, but our age does not determine our level, which <laughs> right. maybe we're getting at. Yeah, because I know, you know, level two is it's all about me. And we all know plenty of 60 or 70 year olds for whom it is still all about them. Thank you. That's right. And so one of the unique things in adulthood is that we have the capacity to quit growing. We can actually arrest our own development. Right. Um, right. Sometimes it's not our choice. I mean, sometimes there are some things that have happened to us in childhood that may predetermine that kind of stuff. But, but the reality is a, a lot of adults, because it's the hard stuff in life that grows us in the way that we're talking about in the book, uh -huh. not, just, not just learning new things, but having a, a fundamentally different understanding happens because hard things happen. Right. It changed that understanding. So it's, it's kind of ironic that the more resourced we get, the more capacity we have to actually fix these challenges. It, it steals from us an opportunity to grow. Well, and I also know, I mean, I know from my own life that um, – that growth is not automatic, that, no. you know, you have to, growth happens because you're willing to experience, reflect, and move through very difficult situations and difficult emotions and difficult challenges and, and, and allow them to change you. And, you know, that's so easy to say, but it's really, <laughs> really hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we, we like to do in our program is we actually have people identify landmark events in their life. Mm -hmm. And 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 what we are, are able to show is that these landmark events actually um, accelerate people's development right. because they actually don't see the world the same way after, say, a loss of a loved one. Right. Right. And, and so it's really interesting to see how um, these, these landmark events, these significant events in our lives actually impact us and grow us. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, in, in, in a program that I run, one of the things that I often ask people is to write down the top five times in their career. These are senior leaders, people who've been very, very successful. 
the top five times that their career has taken a big jump forward. You know, not stepwise, but something, you know, a big jump forward. And then, and they all write them down. And then I say, look at that list and how many of them would be, like, how many of them involve real failure? Like, how many of them involve, like, a challenge that you actually, was such a big challenge that there was a failure that created that next move up? And usually somewhere around 50% of the great leaps forward in their career were a consequence of failure. And I find that really interesting because we spend a lot of energy trying to avoid failure. We work, we work with a lot of executives. And um, it's, it's so interesting to us when one of us will ask them, I mean, how many of you are here today in this room with these great jobs and you're here as a result of a failure? or your result of a loss in your life. And they all go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm here because of that. Yeah. Right. We, 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 learn, we learn that we learn actually how to, how to grow out of um, those, those, those That's holes. That's interesting. That's a really interesting phrasing. <laughs> right. right. And, and, look, and we also look, and how do we grow? We grow through failure. Right. We grow through, we grow through falling. Right. In fact, we actually we talk about falling forward. Right. It's right. a great when Richard. You ride, when you ride a bike. Right. How do you learn to ride a bike? Well, you only work, the only way to learn to ride a bike is by falling. Right. Richard right. Rohr, who's the Franciscan monk who really is a beautiful writer, but he Love wrote a Rich. book called about the second half of your life called Falling Upward. Yeah. Yep. And it's a great, it's a great uh, phrase, I think. And, and right. Okay, let's talk about these, four, these five levels. What's level one, level two, level three, level four? So level one is not a level of adulthood. It's actually the way a four-year-old makes sense of the world where this kind of their perceptions are reality. And it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of make-believe and a lot of you can trade three pennies for a dime to any four-year-old you can find just about, which is a 70% margin, by the way. It's just a slow way to make money. Um, the uh, level two is where we really start talking about adulthood. And it's actually a very middle school mindset. It's a bullying me first, how am I going to win, zero-sum game, we're pitted against each other kind of mindset. And the reason we even talk about it in the book is it's related to leadership, is because 3 to 5% of the highly educated adult professional population has stopped growing and sees the world like a middle schooler, which so, is crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, like, maybe even including people in serious levels of political power. But, <laughs> but let me ask you um, – you know we stay away from that, don't you? There's like I, I do too. I have never. I actually really do never bring politics in, so I, I'm, it's not even clear <laughs> who I'm talking about. Um, but but here's the question for you, which is, you know, there are sometimes pure, you know, narcissistic examples of the, yeah. you know, it's all about me and et cetera. And and you know what I like to bring in 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 this, you know, in a conversation around categorization is, you know there are really successful leaders who have some scent of this, that, that ultimately it's a survival characteristic and there are contexts that bring this out in people that mm -hmm. you could be at a higher level of growth and suddenly you're thrown into, it's all about me because something has scared you. I mean, it's something that comes from fear and survivalism more than anything else. I'm curious to get your reaction to that. Yeah. You know, I, I'll, yeah, the way I would answer that is that it, what we find is that uh, people who, who are at sort of higher levels of, of these leader levels in adult development is that, let's say that they're level four. Now they're level four, and if they get thrown down to level two, they know they're going down to level two, <laughs> right? right. There, right. There's a consciousness, there's a so consciousness. there's an awareness. There's an awareness of it. Right. Whereas if you're at level two, um, you know what? Th that's all there is. Right. That's, so that's their, that is their operating system. Got it. Got, Got it. it? Okay, level three. Level three is, uh, you, want, you want me to do it? Well, level three, I'll do level three. Level three is actually when you are, are defined by the other. You don't necessarily have relationships. You are those relationships. So many of the decisions that you make are actually uh, things you've seen works at other places. And you decide, well, you know what, I'll do that. So is the whole idea of best practices a level three modality? It is. Thank you. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a big statement. That's a, yeah, but no, but, it's, 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 it's being, it's the thought that, you know, someone else is doing this in this company that if we, if we insert it into our company, it'll work. It's right. really understood, Peter, in terms of 
it's not self-authored. Right. It's outside sourced, right? And 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 this gets very complicated. I think the whole idea of identity politics, I think the idea of identifying with some group that totally defines our understanding of ourselves and how we should react with the interact with the world and all of these things is a very level three idea. And so while a lot of times uh, what the way we see it show up in terms of application is um, I'm way, way, way too concerned about what my boss thinks about me right? or, or what my peers are thinking about me or what if I do this, is that going to be, I, I don't know, what will they think, you know? And it's almost like a paralyzing way of being, which is why you're not effective in leading others from level three, but but I want to add one thing: is it is it's not just other people that can define you. It can be your role. It can be your wealth. It could be your country club membership. It could be, be your politics. It could be, right. you know. And it's like, but it's not. It's not really yours from the inside out. Right. And anybody who's grown beyond it is able to reflect back and say, Yeah, I remember that time in my life, but it was this thing that kind of knocked me out of that where I really had to get grounded in who I was. And that's moving toward level four. Right. And it's actually interesting because moving out of, well, we're going to talk in a second about moving from one level to another, but I would imagine that moving out of level, like moving out of level two to level three makes everybody around you very happy. Moving out of level three to level four makes everybody around you very unhappy. Very good point. And what happens is that at level four, you're unlikely to give people at level three what they want to hear. Right, right. <laughs> right. And that's that's a problem. Right. <laughs> and, and yet when we look at subordinate effectiveness ratings of a leader and when we look at actually the leader's effectiveness ratings as uh, them rating their subordinates, their effectiveness goes up at level four because people experience the groundedness, even though they may not be as concerned with maintaining the relationship in a level three way. And then there is a almost a leader level to the culture of organizations too. And I've worked with a number of CEOs who were totally level four. And if you're familiar with like a uh, Jungian personality, kind of a intuitive thinking CEO strategic sort of mindset mm -hmm. coming in to lead like a family, an organization that uses lots of family words to describe <laughs> themselves and how we're all part of this family. And when they come in, boy, they, I've seen some people really hated right. those environments. All right, interesting. So describe level four. Um, level four is groundedness. It's self-authoredness. It's I know who I am. There's a level of self-awareness, commitment to my values. I'm more concerned about not living up to a standard that I've authored than I am what you will think about me if I don't live up to your standard, right? I'm curious about how this plays out cult cross-culturally and culturally because you're describing, you know, a growth track that for Americans, for an American culture is very second nature. You know, we're a culture of self-made people and a sense of I author my own life and I can make happen what I need to make happen. But if you go to a different cultures, if you go to more collectivist cultures, you go to a cul culture like Japan or you go to a culture like, you know, a variety of cultures in Latin America, it's much more about um, – there, there, it almost feels like the culture itself is more of a level three culture than a level four culture. I'm curious what you've seen. Take it. I mean, you've been to the Middle East. So yeah, well, um, I, I agree with that. I think, I think there are cultures that um, – and our and sort of our way of thinking about things actually inhibit growth, and and what you see is um, in a lot of cultures um, I, I like to, and we see it we see it in our culture by the way, but there's this there's this kind of playing the blame game, um, which we see a lot of at level three because, you know if if something happens to me it's not my fault it's because something someone did something to me, right a lot of victim and so there's a lot of victimhood. And, yeah, it's and, interesting. I mean, I, I also I think that's interesting. So you, you find blame more prevalent in level three than level four. Absolutely. You and know, that's what that's one of the hallmarks, by the way. That's the hallmark for us. And one of the great shifts is actually moving from blame to responsibility. Right. And that's a very challenging right. thing to do for most people. I mm. think it's I think it's uh, that makes sense to me. And I think it's really important to go slow here. Um, because I wouldn't say that a collectivist culture 
is one of blame, I would say it's one of communal responsibility. And so if I look at a culture in Japan, I wouldn't say they're stuck in a blame culture, but I would say that who we are is more important than who you are. And that that might inhibit growth from an American normative approach, but possibly not from a more sort of, you know, appreciating the complexity of different cultures that you could have tremendous ownership in a collectivist way in a culture that values the group norm over the individual achievement norm. And, and, and let me just, I'll, I'll add to that, but the way you're talking about communal living is actually more like level five. Oh, so let's go to level five. <laughs> That's great. And, and so, so, so as, a, as a metaphor here, is that what happens at level four you have this great GPS system in your head. You know how to get from point A to point B. It's actually a very effective way of leading other people because you know how to get around. You know how to do things. You own it. Right. The difference between level four and level five is you have that same GPS system at level five. But at level five, you're interested in building new roads. Right. Right. And you know you can't do it alone. That you have to have others help you in building those new roads. Right. So they're much more focused at level five on the culture. Got it. Got it. All right. So in, in a few minutes, maybe give us a few tips. Let's say, you know, moving, let's give up on level one. You don't spend a lot of time on it in the book anyway. And it's, it's, you know, you're really sort of starting off at level two in many ways. So let's talk about, and assuming we're not talking to a ton of four-year-olds, um, let's talk about the like movement from level two to level three, level three to level th four and level four to level five. Let's start with level two to level three. What are some tips? What are some things you can share with us that might guide people's thinking around how you move from this sort of, it's all about me to, you know, not necessarily ideal, but this idea of being overwhelmed by outside influences. All right, let me, given that three to 5% of the population, this concerns, my guess is of that three to 5%, only 1% is watching this video. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, they're not concerned about this, they're concerned about themselves. And but so I wanna approach this in, what do you do if you feel like you've got someone who's level two around you? What can you do to facilitate their growth to level three? Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. And, and it, what it makes me think is the, que the larger question of self-assessment too, because if it's only three to 5% of the population, and yet we all know people who are at level two, yeah. and we all complain about people who are at level two, it's then because it's I have to sort of question the statistic. No. It, okay. So here's the it, it, three to five percent in the highly educated professional population. I mean, this is college edu educated professionals. The, st the statistics actually go up as you get out of that category where it's a more me first. I don't know, survivalistic, almost understanding. Right. The the thing is, is and, and I've actually coached a couple of people, uh, Peter, on purpose just to see if I could, who were in their mid thirties that were stuck at level two and. My gosh, you've got to be concrete the way you've got to be concrete with a middle school or you've got to define the win in growing and, and be able to enforce consequences for remaining where you are. But but the whole journey, to, just to quickly, is about moving from a me first, only can see the world through my lens and how I'm impacted, to being able to truly put myself in other people's shoes, empathize with their point of view, um, and um, and, and recognize our, our interconnectedness, right? Which is what a teenager kind of does in high school. If they're healthy and growing, they figure that out. Right. And, and, and for, for a manager, right. Who has a level two, the most important thing is you have to meet them where they are at level two in order to move them. So how do you do that? Well, you put it, you have to put things in their language. In fact, if you're trying to if you're trying to develop them, you have to get them to see that there's more to what they're trying to do than than trying to get individual benefit. Yeah, right. You have to see that there's something in it for the rest of the team or the group they're working with. Right. And so in, in some ways you have to say we've had success in actually changing reward systems. Right. Where now rather than getting individually rewarded, you can now get rewarded based on the team performance. And we've seen people who can't even operate in that system. Oh, too. right. Exactly. I mean, so it sounds like in those situations, you're not necessarily changing their level or perspective, but you're leveraging the perspective they have in order to get them to to sort of 
approach life from a broader perspective. That's the that is in order to facilitate growth. That's exactly true. You've got to create. Um, you've got to meet them where they are. Right. In their win loseness. Right. Just like you do a teenager, you're going to. I mean, a, a middle school, you're going to get punished if you don't change your behavior in this way. And then the lens follows that. The lens change follows that. So you act and your thoughts and beliefs follow when you see that you've gotten some success from that perspective. When you can, if I, t we don't have time. If I told you the stories about when I have coached a couple of these people through, it is, abs it was uncomfortably absurd. The things that I felt like I was asking them to do, knowing that they were also a grown up. Right. Right. But we, but we, but we did it. We employed it. We're, right. you know, where, and, and by the way, back to your three to 5% statistic, you know, Think, think about this. For every 20 people you know, that means one of them. Right. Maybe stuck somewhat in level two. And I think that's where most people would kind of come down on this. Now, you can get in, you can be in an organization where the numbers are way worse than that. Right. And we've worked for a couple of organizations that were way more cutthroat, way more me first kinds of organizations that they attracted a higher level of level twos than that. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you work at Emory and I, I don't know Emory specifically, but academic environments are notoriously sort of individually focused and people who are kind of about <laughs> themselves and not necessarily about some like collective, you know, alignment and continued growth. So I imagine that, at, you know, at least a healthy percentage of that three to 5% find themselves you know, in academic professions. So, so can, <laughs> let me just say something that I'm not going to let him say is that the statistical norms in P, in the PhD professorship are actually higher than three to five percent. Right. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> OK. Um, and it's just, good because I intuitively <laughs> didn't like the idea that when you said, you know, among the educated people, you know, that's, you know, it's a smaller number than among everybody else, because that hasn't been my experience. And I, I had a, I had a, a resistant reaction to that idea. So I I'm glad you like heard. that we're, we're seeing a lot of that in the PhD students do. But you know what? You can see this also. I mean, you can see this in the high levels of the financial industry. Yeah. Um, I mean, high tech, I mean, technology. I mean, I mean you, you could argue that a lot of highly successful people have Thank become you. highly successful in that particular way because they're stuck in level two. It doesn't make them good leaders, but it makes them so self-focused that they end up, you know, and they don't, they're not at level three yet. So they're not really caring what other people are thinking. And right. they're very, very focused on their own survival and getting as much as they can. And I mean, I don't know, I haven't done the research, right? But I would imagine that some highly successful people are, you know, are maybe become successful because they stay at level two in a particular way. And do you know what? Can I just say thank you for pushing back on this? Because we did not want to communicate that there was some sort of educational disparity in this because some actually we haven't gotten to level five yet. But this sort of wisdom of the ages kind of thing, the first person when I kind of Keegan had a huge influence on, on, on me and uh, on us in some ways. And when I started learning this and one of the first people I met was actually a 75 year old African-American brick Mason who was working on our house with a sixth grade education. And this guy was one of the coolest people I was ever around. And I sort of recognized it. And I had this old cassette tape recorder and I said, can we just sit down and talk? Would you mind if I recorded it? And I don't have the tape, which is like, ah. Heartbreaker, but it was one of the it just totally amazing. It's not there's no like threshold of education in this. Right, right. Great. So going from level two to level three, we've talked about let's we don't have a lot of time here, but let's quickly give us a tip or two to go from level three to level four from this sort of, you know, um, overwhelmed by outside influences to this sense of I, I'm not going to blame I own. You want to take it? Well, I, I think the way to the way to think about this is not so much a, a tip, but but what happens is is that you you actually at all, at all these levels you actually meet up with failure, <laughs> and and what happens is you know at level three there's a number of different ways to fail, and one of them is that you know because you're 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 so interested and so caught by the relationships you end up doing everything for everyone else. You end up not getting your own work done, <laughs> and so you end up getting burned out, right? Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And so what happens is that 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 you realize, hey, listen, 
I got to make my own decisions. It's hard to say no. (laughs) Yeah, I got to make my own decisions here. I have to start making my own decisions. It's almost like it's uh, it's almost like you have to reach back. What I'm hearing is, I go from level two, which is all about me, to level three, which is all about you. To get to level four, I kind of have to reach back into that well of level two. It's all about me, and bring some of that sort of sense of it is a little bit about me and I need to take that ownership and I need to like not give myself up my my I have a new book coming out called leading with emotional courage which is coming out in July and I talk about leadership in terms of confidence in yourself and connection to others commitment to a purpose and then emotional courage and these four elements and two of the elements this sort of confidence in yourself and connection to others you know, you need them simultaneously, in my view, because if you're totally confident, if it's all about you and not about them at all, right, right. you've lost. If it's all about them and not about you, you're th- those are describing level two and level three. And somehow it almost feels like to take ownership, you're melding, you're you're operating at a level of simultaneous level two and level three. Curious about yeah. your thoughts. It's so true, but it's where the truest version and understanding of compassion of empowerment, of conflict resolution, of, I mean, name, name something. It's the, it's the truest expression and version of, of that comes out of this refined self-authored way of, of understanding. And I, I know you had asked us before we even started the interview, that kind of some pragmatic elements, you know, some points of application. Yeah. In this move between three and four, and I don't know how much time we we have left, but um, one of the richest areas for growth in any of us at any time, and it meets us where we are, is what's our biggest complaint right now? What's our biggest frustration? What's my biggest frustration? And, And from level three, that frustration may be with my boss or the circumstances or or these things outside of me from level four, it may be actually frustration with myself, mm-hmm. right? Even when I interview level five people who are even elderly, their frustration is with missing opportunities to make a difference for others. Right. You know, it's, it's, but, but there's still a frustration and it's in that frustration. And what we all want to do with frustration is fix it and make it go away right when actually the frustration is supposed to fix us right right yeah i so, like that so so if you can get if if your listeners can say yeah i've got some things i'm complaining about maybe that is my biggest opportunity for growth what do i need to do to lean into it that's the magic from level 3 to level 4 right that happens over and over and over again for 20 or 25 or 30 years for people right where every area of life eventually gets touched on. Love it. Give me one sentence or two on level four to level five, getting to that holy grail. Boy, I think it's, uh, it's okay, one sentence, say it. Uh, it's not just, go ahead. <laughs> the, the one sentence that we've heard a lot about level five leaders who, who basically said this to us, and now we, we incorporate it into much of what we talk about. They'll say something like, you know, it's not just about us, it's about all of us. Mm-hmm. And so and so what they're concerned about is not just the team, but they're concerned they're concerned about the organization and maybe even the the community in which the, the, the industry, the, the industry, community, the, the, country, the, the country, the, the world. country, the world. They they're they're painting with a much broader brush. So there's like a much stronger sense of for the sake of. Like we are doing this for the sake of. And there's a va- there's a higher order value system that is the ultimate evaluative standard and that there may be multiple ways to get there. And, you know, for anybody, there's been so much so many great films on Mandela over the last couple of years. But but and King is another great example. But the, the, a, a guy who came in and, and saw the bigger picture amongst all of the division and actually united. Right saw what we had in common rather than what separated. And, and, and that's what we see in level five leaders, even in families, right. you know, whether it's a 75 year old aunt or uncle in some way, you know, it's it, uh, or grandparent. In a spiritual sense, there is some letting go of the ego. We were talking about Richard Rohr and his book, Falling Upwards, the Franciscan monk, that there's a sense of letting go of the ego and seeing yourself as part of the bigger frame. 
Yeah, that sounds like and that's, that's a great way of putting it. A huge yeah. Richard Rohr fan. Huge <laughs> Richard Rohr fan. He says in, a, in a, the, uh, the book um, uh, Breathing Underwater mm -hmm. um, that we are uh, – every one of us struggles with addiction, and for most of us, we're addicted to our own way of thinking. And when we can get our arms around that at level four, it opens us up to the possibility of level, level five. Level five. Beautiful. Keith Eigel and Carl Kuhner, the book is The Map, Your Path to Effectiveness in Leadership, Life, and Legacy. Thank you so much for joining us on the Bregman Leadership Podcast. Totally fine, Thank Peter. You, Peter. Thank you. Thank you.